Vortex-based mathematics is a form of numerology based on some idiosyncrasies of the decimal base 10 system. There is beauty in these patterns, but it's not what some make it out to be. So let's admire the beauty, but from a position of real understanding. First, arrange the non-zero digits in a circle like this. The pattern emerges through a cycle of doubling and calculating digital roots. The doubling is easy. Just multiply by two, starting at one. The proponents of vortex-based mathematics say that doubling is appropriate because of its significance in nature. Okay, this should be more than enough powers of two. Now, we've got to calculate the digital roots. Finding a digital root is also simple. You need only add the digits of the number until you arrive at a single digit answer. A single digit number is its own digital root, like one, two, four, and eight. But for larger numbers, the sum of their digit may be more than one digit, so you'd have to decompose that into a digital root again. Like six plus four is 10, that's a two digit number. So you'd have to add one and zero. So the digital root finally is one. You do that until the result is one digit. Connect the digital roots as they occur in the circle. So we start at one, go to two, then to four, then to eight. 16 would be the next number. However, since it's not on the circle, we need to use its digital root instead. So we connect eight to seven. The digital root of 32 is five. So we connect seven to five. And we can see this shape almost complete. After five, we have 64. Its digital root is one. So five connects back to one. Once we return to one, the cycle begins all over again. And this shape, or vortex, goes over and over for infinity. Just to make sure, let's look at the next number, 128. This is a three digit number. Add up its digits, one plus two plus eight, you get 11. Now, 11 is a two digit number. So add its digits, one plus one, that's two. As you can see, there are some numbers that were not included. These numbers, three, six, and nine, are considered very special. So let's start with three, and let's start to double. Three, six, 12. Now, you'll note that because six is double three, the doubling of six is also in this list. So we're really doing both of them at the same time. Three is only different because it contains three, but six doesn't. Right, so three, six, 12. The next number there should be 24. Okay, considering their digital roots, three and six are single digit numbers. They have their own digital root, but then there's 12. One plus two is three, two plus four is six. So three and six, when you double them, are going to bounce back and forth between each other forever. They're never going to escape that. Remember, six is double of three already. So the doubling of three contains all of doubling six within it, except it also has three. We haven't touched nine yet. Now, maybe you remember the nine trick from school. Whenever you add the digits of any multiple of nine together, you always get nine or one of its multiples. We're gonna see that play out right here. Nine, 18, 36. This is what you get when you start at nine and then you begin to double. Nine is a single digit number. It is its own digital root. One plus eight is nine. Three plus six is nine. Seven plus two is nine. All of the multiples of nine have a digital root of nine. There are applications and interpretations to the universe that proponents of vortex-based mathematics may go into. Divine stuff, uh, scientific stuff, but this is just the mathematics. I think it's really important to go through this because one, I wanna educate you in the audience if you haven't heard of this, but also because I want to show the people who believe this stuff, who really believe it, that I really do understand it. I'm not debunking a straw man, but also, as a person with a genuine love for mathematics, I want to appeal to them on that level. I recognize a love for mathematics in the people who tout this. This stuff is beautiful. But when I say that vortex-based mathematics 
is wrong. I'm not saying that the people who believe in it are stupid or bad. I want to affirm their love for numbers and guide them to a position of love, but love with understanding. All right, that's all I'm after here. Okay. Now that I've explained what vortex-based mathematics is, let's talk about what makes it work. First, the three, six, nine group. Nine is only special because adding nine doesn't change a digital root. There's nothing special or mysterious about nine. This is just a property of the decimal base 10 system. There are only nine digital roots to choose from here. So if you start at nine and then move nine around the circle, you end up exactly where you started. It doesn't matter where you start from, but the multiples of nine start at nine and are trapped there forever. Every third multiple of three and six is also a multiple of nine because three is the square root of nine and three is a factor of six. But if you start at three and double it, you're never going to multiply it by three. So three and six are outside of the normal doubling um, cycle, not quite in the nine one because they don't have a second three as their factor. That's why. Again, there's nothing special or mysterious about nine. When you add nine, you're just adding 10 and subtracting one. So you increase the tens place by one, you decrease the ones place by one, the digital root stays the same, plus one, minus one. You can't change a digital root just by adding nine. It's impossible. Okay, next, let's talk about the vortex. The one, two, four, eight, seven, five, one, repeating loop. Once again, this is just a coincidental feature of the base 10 decimal system. If we were using a different base, this wouldn't necessarily work. A power of two is the second highest digit in base 10, or at least the digital root of a power of two is the second highest digit. It matters for two reasons. First, because it makes them symmetric, and that's going to matter later. But for the other reason, we're going to need to go through them. So let's start, one doubles to two. That's going to start us at one and then move us one space. I'm noting here how many spaces we're moving, one space clockwise. Now we're beginning again at two. Two gets double, results in four. That is moving clockwise a total of two spaces. So we'll draw that in and you can see this path widening out, move one, then move two. If we just move two, we're gonna to need to move four spaces from four to eight. So we draw that in. Now that we are now at the highest power of two, the second highest digit, something interesting is gonna happen because after moving one and then two and then four, we should be moving a total of eight spaces. We can't get up to 16, so we end up at the digital root of 16, but it's like we took one step in the other direction. Instead of going up eight, it's almost like we went down one. Why did that happen? It happened because eight is one less than the total number of spaces on this circle. If we had gone around by nine, we would have gone all the way around. But because we went around by one less than nine, we ended up failing to reach our original starting point, and so we ended up one behind. Go the next step. Two eights is going to result in two steps back. So it's gonna take us from seven to five. Do you see the symmetry now? The one and the eight are symmetric, but the two and the seven are symmetric. So just like we went from one to two, we went from eight to seven. From seven down to five, just like we went to two to four. The next move is gonna to have to be 32, which is a total of four eights, which means four spaces back, counterclockwise. This is going to land us back on one. This cycle will continue, but it has nothing to do with vortexes in nature. It has nothing to do with some kind of divine design of the universe. It has everything to do with the fact that we're using a base 10 decimal number system and that a digital root of a power of two is the second highest digit. So moving around that much brings us one back. 
because it is a cycle. That's the whole reason that this works, okay? It is a lengthening move in the clockwise direction and then a lengthening move in the counterclockwise direction. That's all that's happening here. Okay. Okay, so we figured out how the vortex works. We know the rules. Now we're gonna play this again, but with a new base. Here's what it needs to have. One less than the base, the highest digit, must be the square of an odd number. It must be an odd square, just like nine is the square of three in the decimal system. The second highest digit, the base minus two, just like eight was the digital root of a power of two, in this new system, the second highest digit needs to be the digital root of the power of two. Lastly, it needs to have some kind of numerological significance so that it can take the place of vortex-based mathematics. The number we're gonna use is 26. It follows all the rules. The highest digit would be for the number 25, which is five squared, and believe it or not, in base 26, 24 is the digital root of a power of two. In order to do this, we're going to need to know how to change bases. I'm going to go through that in the next screen. And while you watch that, I wanna tell you something, okay? So I've tried to debunk this one way, to educate you about the mathematics, to explain that there's nothing special about three, six, or nine. The vortex pattern is a coincidence you get because you're doubling in a set of numbers where eight is the second highest, that there is no transcendent meaning or significance at all. But some of you may not buy that. You may accept the math, even celebrate it and say, this just deepens your understanding of vortex-based mathematics and makes you even more amazed by its divine significance. Then this one is for you. See, I know why the Vortex works. And that means that I can play the game. That's all numerology is, a game. And I can play it too. If you think you found a deep, transcendent meaning in Vortex-based mathematics, I'm going to blow your mind. You've only been scratching the surface. This goes way deeper than I think you're prepared to accept. And I can show you that if you are doing vortex-based math for real, you're an occultist, a Satanist. And if you can't handle that, then you need to get away from the vortex because it's more than you're prepared to handle.